Howdy gamers, this is Senile Sarge, and today's video is a beginner's guide to playing Core Keeper. We actually put a video out a couple days ago about if the game is worth your money, and this video is focused on helping you be better at the game so you don't make the same mistakes that I did early in the game. To help find the content that you want, I've placed timestamps in the description below so you can go there, kind of go where you want to go and what you want to see. If you're looking for others to play with because you don't have a lot of folks to play with, and it doesn't only have to be Core Keeper, but other games as well, come visit the community I'm part of. It's called Rally Point. You can do that by joining at discord.gg forward slash rally point or by visiting the link in the description below. All right, let's get into the guide. So first we're gonna talk about the game settings. Two main areas I would focus on when initially viewing settings, which is the game settings and then the UI settings. The UI settings really allow you to see the things on your main HUD. So this is the main area that you're gonna see is when you're playing the game. I would suggest that early players kind of leave all this stuff on. If you're skilled at these type of games, you probably can remove it. It's not going to really uh, impact you in any way. For gameplay settings is a bit more focused on specific parts that you may want to change. I would recommend you don't allow friends to join without the game ID in this area. Basically, what that means is if I see that you're playing the game, I can join you. I don't need the ID. You really want people to join your game that you've allowed to join your game. So that's definitely something you may want to look at. And then also, of course, vibration. If you don't like vibration and cameras, stuff, camera shaking and things like that, you can see some of those options here inside of this menu. All right, next is character creation. Uh, the character creation is pretty simple in Core Keeper. There are two types of modes in Core Keeper. You have standard, you have hardcore. Sim simply explained, hardcore, if you die, you're not coming back. So there is no such thing as respawn. Standard, you get to respawn. You'll keep all the stuff that is on your uh, toolbar down at the bottom. Anything that was inside of your inventory, you got to go back. You got to pick up uh, basically at a headstone that you'll see. Uh, one important note, you can actually use the same character for multiple worlds. So if you create a character, you decide to go into another world, you can use that same exact character and then move it back. So forth and so on. That's actually a really nice feature that they included in the game. And I really enjoy doing it. So I've been kind of bouncing around to different worlds with the same character. Uh, you can also randomize your character by pressing the this button here. So inside of this screen, if you press this button, randomize. And then from here, you can look on the left side and kind of change the stuff that you want to change, right? Alter anything you want, such as hair color, the body, the skin, so forth and so on. For me, I just changed hair and then I went into the backgrounds. So in the backgrounds, I, I like to think of them as the classes for Core Keeper. You have Explorer, Miner, Fighter, Chef, Gardener, Fisherman, and Nomad. I think for most players that are gonna be playing alone, I would highly recommend that you choose Explorer, Miner, and Fighter, because those three are gonna be the main things that you're gonna be doing. Uh, if you're playing with others, then you guys can talk it out and figure out where best to go. I can't tell you having a chef and some of these other things, fishermen and, and gardeners and stuff like that right off the bat is actually a pretty good idea, especially if you have friends going in there. Uh, the great part of Core Keeper is that the class only really matters at the beginning, since as you start to level up through the games, you're gonna get the opportunity to spread your skills as well. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, once you've done selecting your background, pick your name and then click done. You're ready to start. Next, we're going to talk about your in-game HUD. If you look up on the top left, you can see kind of that up here, you have your health. You also have your food. Uh, you're going to need to monitor your food because that's going to be one of the things early game that that's going to kind of deplete pretty quickly. Top right, you have the mini map of the game. Super easy to look. You can also press M on your keyboard to show the, the full map. Uh, bottom middle of the screen, you have your hot bar, which corresponds with the numbers one through zero. The bottom right is your legend, which includes how to open your map. So you'll see the hand open up with the letter E. You have the map icon. And then, of course, you have the tab button there, which is going to open up your inventory. So you've pressed tab. So let's talk a little bit about your inventory screen. Uh, the crafting box is where you craft initial items such as your torches, wood tools and your basic workbench. Top right, you'll see that you have your character armor screen, which includes a helm, chest, pants, hand, offhand, your two rings, and of course your necklace. Many of these items you're gonna be finding out when you're out and about, but you can also craft a lot of these items using some of the workbenches you'll be using later game. Additionally, you have the skills tab in the box, which allows you to increase your points as you do certain things in game. The more time you spend on a particular area will help you get skill points in that area. So whether it's fishing, it's cooking, whatever it is, as you do that task, you're going to get more skill points to, to use. Finally, you have the inventory area for all the items you pick up in the game. Crafting storage units is cheap once you build a basic workbench. Highly recommend you spend uh, some time in the inventory management early. Get things where you want them, create chests, 
split things up to make it a little bit easier for you as you can progress through the game. For early game priorities, you're gonna to wanna to be focused on wood, torches, food, finding water, and then finding ore. And that ore initially will be core 10, and then you'll continue to move forward. Each of these resources will be needed as you move through the early stages of the game. So again, focus on those wood, torches, food, finding water, and copper ore. And then of course, just mining. Stay kind of close to where your base is. You don't need to go too far. Trust me, you're gonna find plenty of copper ore. Now for wooden torches, torches are a key component to seeing where you're going. Uh, to craft a torch, you're gonna need wood. As you spawn in, you're gonna see plenty of roots on the ground and that's what you get wood from. You're gonna go ahead and hit those. You don't need, uh, you don't need a pickaxe or anything. You just slap them and it's gonna give you uh, wood. Uh, spend a few minutes hitting all those, collecting it all. The best strategy early game is to dig tunnels through each direction, right? So that's north, east, south, and west kind of straight line. And what you're looking for is you'll find open areas that have wood inside of them, okay? Just like the roots of that open area that you spawn in, those same areas will be throughout the thing. Place torches also as you kind of go through this area, which is pretty simple to place torches. You don't have to have it on your hot bar, you can. The other way to do it is just put it in your inventory. You can press the shift button, which will then pop your, uh, your torch up and then you right click to place it on the ground. So that's just a little tip there that, uh, that I didn't know early game. Copper is needed early to build uh, cooking pots, salvage and repair station and copper tools, and of course a water can. As you dig the various directions from the starting area, you're gonna be looking for large plus signs, which indicates there's resources at that location. Now the resources can vary, right? You can have copper, you could have tin, or you can even have gold in some areas. There are higher concentrations of particular ores in different areas, but we'll get into that into an, in another video. Your first priority here is getting enough copper to craft the items we mentioned earlier, which is your cooking pot, salvage and repair station, copper tools and water can, and then getting a farm starter for food. Food is going to be vital for you, especially early game. As you get further in game, it becomes a little bit easier, but early game, you want to focus on it. Now that we're talking about food, let's talk about food just a little bit more. As you'll notice early game, you'll, you'll find mushrooms around the starting base. These are a great snack for your character. And you're going to find these more as you go out and you're looking for additional roots or wood as you go out. However, once you get enough copper, you need to get that cooking pot up right? The uh, copper hoe, that way you can dig and farm and then get a water can crafted. To really survive in Core Keeper, we need better recipes for food, which provides better buffs to our character. To do this, we either need to use resources that we find or seeds that we plant to farm to create our own farm and then our own food. As you come back into your base, you can visit the cooking station to start unlocking various recipes for your character. Remember that each recipe provides a different buff for your character. As an example, we're gonna split our mushrooms by pressing uh, basically shift right click. That'll split the stack, put one stack at the top, one stack at the bottom. That's gonna make a mushy mushroom soup. So although mushrooms are good for you, right? We know we're gonna get nine food and 2.1 health. The mushy mushroom soup provides us with 20 food and 4.2 health. So it's actually better to go ahead and cook these and then take that on the food when you're out running around. So that's just one example of the many things that you're gonna be doing. The best way to figure out the recipes is to put different items in the different slots until you figure out what the best food is for you. Some of the items that you're gonna get or the buffs are gonna be for particular things. So some will help you run faster, some will give you better damage, so forth and so on. All right, well, I hope that this gives you a little bit of the tools that I didn't have when I started Core Keeper. If this video has helped you, do me a favor, please hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, we got plenty more Core Keeper content coming and of course other games that come out like Core Keeper that may be impactful or something that you may enjoy. Uh, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you on the next one. Seeing Sarge signing off.